poked myself enough that I should be bleeding, but I'm not. Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to Pretty Good Cooking. Good. This is a rare morning episode. That's right, me and John are hanging out Sunday morning and we're making pizza. And uh, the reason that we're doing this at this time is that we're not very good at working with dough and I wanted to allow myself more time to fail and, well, potentially fail and try to fix things. This is an Extra Life recipe request from our good friend Key. Key loves this pizza recipe. She's developed it over the years. And of course, this is actually a, a very approachable and easy version of pizza, which means it's probably close to my level of, uh, uh, my, my skill level. So yeah, let's, let's get started with the pizza. The first thing we'll do is preheat the oven. We're gonna preheat it to 500 degrees. Beep, beep. 500 degrees, you cook that pizza, huh? Let's get our yeast mixture going. So here in a measuring cup, we're gonna run the tap until it's hot. Hot or warm is fine. My tap water gets pretty hot. You don't wanna like scorch. You, you don't wanna cook your yeast. So you don't want it to be boiling. So don't use boiling water. You need one cup of water. To this, we will add one packet of yeast. I like to slap the packets on the counter because I don't I don't like working with yeast. That's the only reason I do that. I, I'll try to keep my belly aching to a minimum, but uh, you know, it's hard. It's just how I feel, you know? So here's our yeast. This is just regular yeast, active dry. So there's the yeast. Using a utensil of your choosing, vigorously incorporate the yeast into the water, like so, and nice and mixed up. And we're gonna add a pinch of sugar to whet the yeast's appetite. And one and a half tablespoons, no, one and a half teaspoons of olive oil, which is the equivalent of half a tablespoon. And according to the notes, you don't mix the olive oil in there. You just dump it in like that, let it hang out. If you uh, wanna know why for any of the steps in this recipe, please put it in the comments because I, I I don't have an answer, and maybe someone smarter than me will get back to you. So we're gonna let that hang out and bloom for about five minutes. You can go ahead and set a timer, and then we will move on to our next step, which will be the flour. Today we are using King Arthur unbleached all-purpose flour, and we will use two and a quarter cups. You're supposed to aerate the flour a little bit. He says that she basically takes a scoop and like runs it through the canister. What I'm gonna do is just throw it in the food processor and give it a whirl and it'll be fine. And if it's not fine, then you know, even bad pizza is good pizza. I <laughs> think that's, that's gonna be my motto for today. So there's two and a quarter and we'll give it a whirl. Actually, before we give it a whirl, we'll add the salt too. We need a teaspoon of sea salt or salt of your choosing. I'm using a mixture of table salt and a little bit of Himalayan salt for a depth of salt flavor. Uh, actually, it's because I was planning on just using Himalayan salt and um, my I have it in a grinder and my grinder ran out. So I was like, well, I'm too lazy to fill this up. So we'll give that a whirl, get some air in there. Uh, we'll try plugging it in first. Neat. Okay, we could also, you know, we could like whisk it in a bowl, you know, whatever, it's fine. So what we're gonna do from here is wait for our yeast to bloom. We got a couple more minutes, we'll be right back. All right, so this is, this is super cool, uh, I think. So this is the food processor, his name's Phil. Uh, it is the food processor. Literally, we can make this dough by just slowly incorporating the yeast and letting that, those chopper blades do all the kneading or like 95% of the kneading. So we got our um, our chute is open at the top. So we'll start it going and then we will slowly pour in our water, yeast, sugar, and oil. Just a little bit at a time. And it's super cool because at a certain point this thing's gonna just form a ball. Actually it kind of forms like a clump first and then it starts balling. You know, like we all, we all be balling on a daily basis. Hey, look at that. There's that. There's a ball. So, in my uh, limited experience with this, what I've learned is that at this point, you need to hold your food processor, lest it go for a wild ride off the counter. But actually, even at this point, you can see there is obviously a ball, but it still needs to continue to knead. So, all of these little pieces that look crazy should eventually get incorporated mostly into like one big dough thing. 
which I learned uh, by doing a little bit of a trial run this morning. It takes just a couple more minutes. Well, I mean, uh, moments rather than minutes. It looks pretty good to me. Kind of a dramatic stop, isn't it? That's because there's, the dough is fairly elastic and sticky, which is good. It's good at this point. Okay, so next step, we're gonna take a bowl. You can preheat, you, can, you need to have the bowl fairly warm. Actually, it would make more sense if I had just left this on the, uh, the stove that's preheating. But instead, I'm gonna heat the, I'm gonna warm up the outside with uh, my hot tap water to take off the chill. And then we slap a little bit of olive oil in there. Like so, you can see I dumped some water in there too. Fantastic. Not really what you're supposed to do, but it's okay. Here I am rubbing the oil on the bowl. Smells good. I like the smell of olive oil. And then, take our dough out of here, like so. And basically, we're just gonna, you know, I don't even have flour in my hands. We're, but we're just gonna knead it like a couple of times to ball it up. And it doesn't have to be perfect by any means because our standard of quality is low. We've got one big ball, slap it in there. You can uh, either give it like a dab of olive oil or just kind of roll it around in a bowl. I'm just gonna give it a little bit here. And then we do one of these. Isn't that fun? It is fun, yes. And then we put cling wrap on it. Here's our cling wrap. And we gotta let it rise till it doubles in size. So typically what you would do is put this someplace warm. He likes to put it on a stove that's been turned off. So in my trial run this morning, what I learned there's so much heat output from my stove right here that if I put the bowl right there, it will cook the dough. I mean, it, it, this bowl got pretty hot, so be mindful of that. In our case today, we'll just put it like kind of on the stove over there. It'll be fine, I think. Relatively warm, should be good. So minimum rise time is probably going to be half hour, 45 minutes. You can let it go even longer. And as I was doing a modicum of research into pizza, a lot of people recommend, even after you let it rise, letting the dough proof for maybe like 18 to 24 hours, which basically helps the pizza be more digestible. I don't know, I'm not a, I'm not a anything. So I, I can't really tell you. This version does not. So we're gonna, it's a quick pizza. You slap that dough together, then you bake it. So while we let that rise, we're gonna work on preparing our toppings. Okay, I got a ball. Ball of low moisture mozzarella, which I'm gonna shred using a box shredder. You want that low moisture uh, mozzarella for pizza. Otherwise your pizza is soggy, I would presume. I don't really know. You could also just buy, you know, a pizza blend, shredded pizza. Shredded pizza, shredded pi uh, cheese blend, that's fine. I was talking to Kia about this recipe and she basically was like, you get the dough right, everything else is fine. So I was like, wow. <laughs> Guaranteed not to succeed. <laughs> so if we did 20 ounces of cheese, I could do one pound of mozzarella and two ounces of the other cheeses. I think I'm gonna need a bigger bowl. I am going with uh, with Keys Blend, which today will be mozzarella and Parmesan and Munster. I think Munster is popular on Detroit style pizza, which is like made in a cake pan. Sad two ounces of Parmesan. This is pre-grated Parmesan, don't at me, it's fine. And let's get some Munster. The only Munster I could find at the store came in a two, one pound block. But it was on sale, so. Munster's a funny, funny word. It's a very soft cheese. Kind of weird. So here is our cheese blend. This is a three cheese pizza. We'll mix it on up. This is probably like way more cheese than we actually need, but we are gonna make a couple pizzas today. We'll set that to the side. Okay, I'm gonna, I wanna make a pepperoni pizza. I got a log of pepperoni. I'm just gonna thinly slice the pepperoni. If you slice it thin, you got a better chance getting that cup action. All right, so the first pizza we, we're gonna make is gonna be a just a regular old pepperoni pizza, I think. We may get wild and crazy with it later, but probably not. This is not really a wild and crazy show anymore. More of a mild thrill and somewhat, you know, hopefully the pizza is edible kind of show. <laughs> so we've got our toppings, we've got our dough. Now we need sauce. Now a super traditional tomato sauce for pizza, and by traditional I mean like you'll, you'll see this referenced a lot of times, is to mix one can of tomato paste with one small can of tomato sauce. But I actually did put a bunch of effort into making a sauce, and here it is. So this is a little bit of a thin sauce, but that's fine, I think, for our pizza today. This comes from about 15 pounds of local farm tomatoes that I cooked and then ran through a manual food mill, and then I mixed in garden garlic, garden herbs, 
and cooked it down for a very long time. So this sauce is bitchin'. This is the best part of the pizza. I'm a sauce guy, I'm a saucy boy. So even if the dough sucks from my failures, even if, if the pizza is not on point, I'm just excited for an opportunity to eat this sauce. I have definitely been eating this out of the jar cold with a spoon. I'm just gonna heat it up uh, briefly. Doesn't need to be hot or anything like that. Okay, so while that's heated up, it's time for movie magic. We'll work with the dough that I had previously going that I think I made some mistakes on. Namely, those mistakes are I did not leave the dough alone. So I made it ahead of time. I wanted to give it time to rise and I kept checking on it and I kept like rubbing on it, folding it and I should have just left it alone, but that's okay. You know, we'll, if this one doesn't come out, the other one will be better, I think. So we need to oil this pan. My pizza pan is full of holes. So if you, uh, if you got a pan full of holes and you apply oil directly to the pan, it'll just fall through. It'll be you know, kind of kind of nasty <laughs> for your counter. And on the flip side, if you just hit it with a paper towel like I am, it might not be oily enough. I guess we'll, we'll find out. Okay, so here's our dough, which is real floofy. Well, that's fine. I'm actually, I'm just gonna slap it there. It says to punch it down and then let it relax. So I'm gonna just slap it a bit. But I actually think it might be relaxed enough. And then the recipe says to finger spread the dough throughout the pan. And here's the, the thing that I'm worried about with my particular dough is that it's not relaxed enough. And if that's the case, I'll have a, a pretty hard time actually spreading it out. So we may need to punch it down like this and then just give it a couple minutes. I don't have too much more to go. For sure we want this thinner than it is right now. And already I will, I will say it is starting to relax, even just in the time that it's been on here, which is interesting. But have you started to relax? No, absolutely not. I will, uh, I will once again say at no point in this was I particularly excited to make pizza. But I did it for them kids. Them extra life donations, which I very much appreciate. All of the support and generosity, it's really cool. So, you know, I can, I can do things that I don't love doing and that's fine. I'm using the old gravity. But what I will say is that, um, you know, in general, the pizza dough should probably be a little bit more elastic than this is. I think it's maybe a little bit dried out. I don't really want to knead it anymore. So maybe let's, uh, let's give it a break and come back to it in a couple minutes and see if we can't stretch out a little bit more. Okay, so I got my dough to cover the pan. It's not perfectly even by any means, but you know, that's that's okay with me because I successfully got the dough to cover the pan, which in my book is a win. So let us proceed with continuing to make our pizza. Now it is very difficult for me as a lover of sauce to restrain myself when it comes to sauce, but you really don't need that much. You can see this is again a thin type sauce. I'm just gonna spread it out. And because this is a big pizza, I will use a little bit more. But you can see right here, the a very thin layer of sauce. Even though I like extra sauce, we're gonna be restrained this time. How's that sauce smell, John? It reminds me of a nice soup. Okay. <laughs> not, not the right answer, but that's okay. All right, so next up will be our cheese. And I, I'm using all of my willpower to make this, so I don't have the willpower to wear the cheese hat today. But you can either, here's a picture of me in a cheese hat, or you can Photoshop briefly in this still. You can put a cheese hat on me, and that's it. So here's our cheese. Around and around we go. Where we stop, uh, we, we'll stop when there's enough cheese on the pizza. And so far, I gotta say, this is looking pretty good. Make sure we get some cheese near the edge, like so. Now we, we'll add our pepperonis. And then, things that make this special. We're gonna make some garlic butter that we're gonna put on here. This is a must from Key's perspective. I'm a, I'm a simple person, so I don't think it's a must, <laughs> but it's not my recipe. So. I'm gonna, you know, I think like a tube of garlic paste from the store would be just fine, but I'm gonna bougie-fy this. So homegrown garlic that I'm gonna crush. It's crushed so fine, I can't even, I don't know how I'm gonna get it out in the mortar. Fantastic. There's our garlic paste. Could use more if you want, but my uh, homegrown garlic is just like crazy strong. I got a knob of butter in there. I'm just gonna throw it in the microwave real quick. So it, while we've been doing stuff, check out how much our dough has risen. This is almost doubled in size from inception. Oh my God, that smells amazing. How's that smell, John? Does it smell like soup to you? 
No, it smells like <laughs> Olive Garden breadsticks. It does smell like Olive Garden breadsticks, you're right. So this, we'll just kind of give it a, a doozy what's it? Oh, we'll call it a smattering. I think the recipe says to paint the cheese. Brush a mixture of garlic paste and butter over the cheese. So I'm brushing, so we'll up the nutrition factor. I'm gonna hit it with Italian seasoning. I did have these uh, Italian herbs in that sauce itself, but I do want to get some over extra seasoning as well. It also says to boil the crust. I, mean, I think I'm gonna do the paper towel method again. Well, actually, why? Why don't I just? Ah, I gotta follow the recipe. It's so hard. It's so hard. I just, I just, you know, I get in the zone of I know better, and I obviously don't know better. So here I am brushing using a towel the crust with olive oil. Looks good. And then, the recipe also says to kosher salt the crust like a pretzel. Isn't that fun? And this bad boy is just about ready to go into the oven at 500 degrees. Recipe does not include a bake time, but typically you would bake a pizza for 10 to 12 minutes at that, uh, at that temperature. And in it goes. Top rack. If we wanted to, we could have that even higher up, but I think it'll be fine. So let's check it in 10 minutes. We'll be back. It's pizza time. And here's our pizza at approximately 12 minute bake. And I gotta say, that looks legitimate. Is it perfect? Probably not. Let's uh, let's take a little, little peek, see if our crust is done. Oh yeah. So I, I almost feel like it could be, no, it's, it's great. It's good. Okay, so it's obviously way too hot to immediately dig in, but maybe let's get some pictures and I'm gonna transfer it so that we can make another pizza. So let's take pictures of that. Okay, I'm gonna slide this pizza off the pan onto this pan. Boom, it's like it was never in the other pan. And we're gonna let this cool for a little bit before we try it, but I will comment. You can see, for example, this side of the pizza is higher than that side of the pizza. And that's because of the way I spread out the dough. I didn't do it perfectly even, but you know, that's okay. You know, it's the first, first time trying this type of pizza. Let's go ahead and give it a cut. Take a look at our crust. Got some interesting air bubbles. I don't really know if that's good or not. Carve a, a pizza slice out. A perfect cut. Pizza, pizza. I know it's too hot to eat, and yet. I didn't buy my mouth. It's really good. I make good pizza. I didn't know I could do that. I think that I would like it with just a little bit more salt on the pizza itself. And that's, that's because of my sauce. I didn't salt that enough. But it has a really nice airiness to it. Where it's, you know, it's not too dense. It definitely tastes homemade to me. Like, it lacks the professional polish of a commercial pizza, but it has really good flavor. And I think it's actually a pretty nice balance of sauce and cheese, where I used less sauce than I would be inclined to do. But yeah, I, I think this came out way better than I expected it to, and everyone can attest to that who witnessed me stressing out about this. And I'm gonna make another pizza. So, thanks to Key for, you know, compelling me to do this, even though I didn't want to. Very gratifying that I made something that doesn't taste terrible, and is actually quite good. The garlic butter is awesome on it, by the way. And yeah, that's how you do it. Let's make another pizza. Maybe we'll show you a picture of it or something. And uh, yeah, okay, bye.